Hey everyone, Arbor617 here with my second quick tip episode. This episode I'm going to be looking at how to do leaf and grass kind of jiggle wiggle type effect to make things look like it's blown around in the wind, make the scene look a little bit more dynamic. I use this in Sky Wars a little bit to make the trees look like they're kind of blowing in the wind. It just made the whole scene feel a little bit more, you know, interesting and intrepid. So, here we have our scene. This is going to be a random scene I use. This is the one I use for my tutorial animation. And the first thing you'll probably want to do is you'll want to group up all these different things you're going to want to jiggle as one group. F so we're going to, you know, we're going to want these grass to jiggle. We're also going to want this grass to jiggle. So if you shift click two different objects, you can do control J to join them. Then you can shift click another one, control J. You know, maybe grab these flowers, control J, and just we're joining all these different things together. You want to kind of pick everything up. It looks like we missed the uh, yellow flowers down here. Control J. Now we have everything grouped. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is go over here to this little wrench tool and go to modifiers. And let me make this a little bit wider. We're going to hit add modifier. We're going to add a displace. And if we play around the strength, you'll see all it really does is just make everything go crazy. I mean, it's kind of cool. We can get some kind of weird looking, you know, explosive trees over here. But that's not what we want at all. So let's set that back to just one for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new texture for the displacement. And then it creates the texture. And we can go over to here, this little like slider thing to go into the properties. And we can choose the texture type. We're going to set it to clouds. And already you notice something actually changed and looks a little bit better. Now if we go back to the modifier, we still have all the stuff selected. Now when we change the strength, you'll notice it actually starts changing a little bit more appropriately. And for some reason the trees appear not to be moving at all. Which is a little strange. We'll look at that in a little bit. I don't know why the trees aren't moving. Anyway, um, so we have the thing kind of working, but what we want to now do is we don't want to, you know, wiggle the strength what we want to do is set the strength to something and move the texture across the grass. So rather than using a local coordinates, we're going to create a new object and use the new object as the coordinates for the texture. So we'll hit Shift A. We'll create an empty plane axis. I'm just going to move it to my scene using the Shift F S te Shift S technique I showed you. Um, so now I just have this little plane axis thing. I'm going to grab this leaf stuff again. Then under local, I'm going to change it from local to object. And then you can use this little eyedropper. Try to grab the empty. Yep, got the empty. There we go. Now that I have the empty, you'll notice right away if I move this, everything jiggles. And that's basically the gist of it. So now I'll just show you which settings you want to do and kind of kind of make this work a little bit easier. So as you see, you know, as I move it, things jiggle. What you might want to do is grab this, go back into these um, properties for the texture. We can increase the size a lot, make it really big. That way you get these kind of, you know, large blowing. You can see how see how it kind of works its way across the grass. Actually, it's probably moving the other way to show that better. You, you can even make these numbers go, I believe, higher than the max. You can set up like five or something. Yeah, see now you get, it really looks like you're, if you had a big field of like um, wheat or something, you could really make the wheat look like it's all kind of blown along. So, what you want to do now is, oh, so, oh, anyway, so let me show you the, you want to play around with basically this overall size to control how big you want, like, the waves of wind to be. Sometimes you want to go kind of high with this. You can also change under colors, you can change, like, the contrast and brightness. You can sometimes play with some interesting things to get, like, let's look at this now. Now we have it really contrasty and just, like, a little few splotches. So now when I move, you'll see some of the grass holds completely still until the wind comes and then it blows it and that looks kind of cool too because then we don't want the grass always moving maybe we don't want it completely so dark let's do something like let's play around with these we want it to be a little bit gray everywhere just, just kind of just playing around with some of the numbers right now this could be interesting Oops. So now you get the grass that, yeah, see how it kind of holds still. It blows a little bit, wiggles a little bit, but waits till like a wind comes. 
and kind of blows it around. It's a really cool effect. Um, so we can play with those colors. We can also play with the overall strength. We can have, you know, just a tiny bit of strength, but have it like blowing a whole lot, like it's really wiggling along. Or we can, you know, have a lot of strength on the modifier, but just have it kind of really slowly, like. Usually you don't want too much strength for the actual movement. I think I usually do something like 0 0.2, 0 0.1 or something. Just, you just want a little bit. Anyway, so that's that. Then the next thing you want to do, you want to, you don't want to have to constantly be, of course, moving this. So give it a keyframe. We want to choose which direction we want to go. I usually go for about 100 frames just to make things simple, round it off. And then you just choose, you know, do you want it going straight? Do you want it going a little bit at a diagonal? Maybe it even kind of goes down a little bit. So it just kind of moves. And we'll keyframe the location again. So now it moves. If we go into the animation, Let's um, make this a little bit bigger. We're going to need all these little windows. Let me go back to the camera view so I can... Oh, the camera view doesn't even show it. There it is. Let's inspect the material. And what we first thing we want to do, we want to set this to linear because we don't want the wind to kind of speed up and slow down. Set, so Sorry, so I right-click that keyframe, hit T, set it to linear, and now we have a straight line. The last thing you want to do is grab all these keyframes and hit Shift-E and do linear extrapolation. And you'll see now it's gonna continue forever. You can just keep animating your scene, you don't ever have to worry about this again. And throughout your entire scene, you're always gonna have, you know, the leaves kind of blowing. And if you feel like this is too slow, I feel like it's a little bit too slow right now. You can always just, you know, pull these keyframes together. And as you can see down below in the curve editor, it automatically, you know, changes the overall speed throughout the whole scene. And there you go. There's some nice blowing grass, blowing vegetation, whatever you want to call it. It'll hopefully make your scene look a little bit more interesting and dynamic. And what I tried to say at the end of last episode, but I think I accidentally cut myself off during the render for some reason, what I was saying at the very end was, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in future quick tips, and I'll try to, you know, make my quick tips based off of what you want to see, rather than just, you know, whatever I feel you might want to see. So, leave comments below, and I look forward to seeing them. I hope this helped. See you next episode.